everyone, I'm Donna Burke and I'm a singer and voice actor here in Tokyo. And I tell you what, I learned the hard way by making lots of mistakes. Lesson number one, the gig starts before you get on stage. So make sure you look fabulous before you even get to the venue. You don't want to make mistakes like practically wear your pajamas in the lobby of the Four Seasons Hotel because hey I've got my dress in my rubbish bag and I'm going to do my hair and makeup you know backstage before I go on after the sound check which I've done basically in my pajamas meanwhile the hotel manager's standing around going who is this horrible looking woman don't do that I used to go to recording gigs in my corduroy jeans with a sort of a slightly clean t-shirt because hey it's an off-camera job they're just booking me for my voice right no they're not you want to exude gorgeousness fabulousness professional singer or voice actor and not i just rolled out of bed and it doesn't really matter so in japan dress for the job you want not for how comfortable your elastic jeans are yeah look good people second lesson is don't just turn up at 11 a.m if the job starts at 11 a.m you turn up at least 10 minutes early so even though you're on time you've made everyone panic where are they why haven't they arrived yet because a japanese person would have scoped out the whole place and would never cause anyone any undue stress by just turning up on the dot. 10 minutes early is being on time. Another really important lesson I've learned in Japan is to be prepared. Now this is not specific to being successful in Japan, but it's been hugely noted by some of my clients that the foreign artists that they book in Tokyo are very lax about being prepared. Of course, they're not talking about me. <laughs> Even though I have forgotten my lines on occasion. So yeah, they are talking about me. You think it's so obvious, right? That wouldn't you check the script beforehand and wouldn't you, uh, you know, learn the song? Capcom booked uh, a singer through my agency, which is Dag Music. I run a booking agency as well. I have since 2004. This singer rocks up, who's been chosen by Capcom to sing this game song and hadn't learned the bloody song and now you were like how can that be possible well people just think oh, oh I'll, I'll you know learn it as i go and it's just, it's just so horrible it's so disrespectful it's so rude and then they say oh if we'd gone to la the singers there would have just been so great so la shout out to you because you've got so much competition you're obviously making a massive effort to but here because like the competition isn't so great people are pretty slack unbelievingly i know that's shocking but yeah so be really prepared okay another really important point and i think derek sivers talks about this too in uh, if it's not a hell yeah it's a no but before you become successful you need to say yes to everything because you don't know who you're going to meet on a job singing at the sheraton hotel next to tokyo disney resort that might lead you to some tv commercial work which might lead you to being chosen to sing uh, for a Metal Gear Solid song in 2010 called uh, mm, When Heavens Divide. So my little, yeah I, I'm free, I can do that, sing at that wedding, I can um, sing at Ikea, I've sang at Ikea. Those led me to connections which led to some really amazing work. So just say yes and be really good at it and people will think oh I want to work with that person. They're on time, they're friendly, and that's what makes a great career. Next point, the next job always depends on how well you do this job. Now again, I own an agency, I've run an agency, and sometimes I'll book B grade talent because that's all the job needs. I want a nice person who turns up on time, who doesn't complain and whinge and all oh, this chair. Oh God, this chair. Can I smell smoke? It just smells like, oh, I feel like a, my, like they just never shut up. They never stop complaining. For a simple job where we're making an educational uh, textbook where A, is for apple and b is for what's the b word God. <laughs> maybe you're just a b talent now but because you're saying yes and because you're really doing your utmost best and you're trying really hard you'll eventually become an a lister i promise you okay so here's a tip like how do you get started how do you get the context well top top tip here don't ask 
your direct competitor for, oh, have you got any good agencies? Can you tell me how you got jobs? Where are you getting all your jobs from? That's just like rude. Oh, please, can I just take money out of your hands? Always ask for help and do it in a really nice way. Hey, can I take you out for lunch? Spend your 20 bucks on shouting someone for lunch. Ask your, someone who's an expert who's not a direct competitor. So for me, if I want to get more narration and voice acting work, I take a guy out for lunch. Eh? Or if I was um, a female singer, I would take a, a guy singer out. Or if I'm a British narrator and I'm, I can't do an American accent, I would take an American female narrator because we're never going to compete for the same jobs. Well, rarely. So don't ask for help from someone who's your direct competition because people are usually really nice and they will want to help you. Unless you're an asshole, then nothing's really going to help you. This leads on to the next point was if you ask yourself, why, why aren't I successful? Why, oh, why aren't I getting these good jobs? And oh, Blame yourself. It's your fault. It's not your parents' fault. It's not your friend's fault. It's not that male narrator who didn't you know take me out for lunch fault it's no one's fault it's your fault now take 100 percent responsibility for your career and you can only blame yourself you didn't put in enough effort you didn't make a good enough demo so you maybe you need to make a better demo let's listen to all the other people's demos who are really successful maybe you're not dressing nicely maybe you've got bo yes people have bo and they go to small studios and they sit there and they stink Oh, I wish I was making this up. Blame yourself, take 100% responsibility and constantly improve, constantly improve. If you're constantly improving, you're not waiting for permission to be successful because you are taking responsibility for your success. Now, um, a lot of artists have a Cinderella fantasy where we're just waiting for someone to hear us sing or, you know, for a model, we're just waiting for someone to tap us on the shoulder are you, you know, are you a model? No, I'm just waiting for my groceries and be discovered. Well, that's, that only happens in the movies. So you discover yourself, you be your agent, you be your best um, promoter, you create content that's really great. And you put yourself out there and in doing that, someone will see you, but don't wait for somebody outside in the world to give you permission to create and be an artist. That's your job to get to it and you don't need money to do it. You all know I live in Japan and um, my career has been really fantastic here. I'm very conscious that I'm not Japanese. Everywhere I go people are going to refer to me as that foreigner or if they know me that Aussie girl. So I act as an ambassador for my country. I always I'm like a freaking diplomat. I'm always on my best behavior in a professional and in a public setting. I'm very careful not to leave a bad impression. Make, I want to make people feel good. I don't want to, I don't want to criticize the, uh, Japanese culture. They've got plenty of Japanese people to criticize it. They don't need me to criticize their culture. You're not working in Japan to change the culture. Um, you're just here to enjoy it. So please act like an ambassador for your country because everyone will be referring to you. Oh, is that English guy or that Chinese girl? And they will judge the whole of England on your actions. So, you know, behave. Okay, guys, I hope this has been really helpful. I've got one final bit of advice. Again, I've worked with lots of fantastic people and it's, you know, the not so fantastic people that you learn stuff from. So I was doing this TV commercial singing as a session singer and they got this uh, guy, American guy, to write the lyrics and then they, they wanted him to change it. And he caused such a fuss. I said to God, God, who cares? It's just a TV commercial, just change the bloody lyrics. And he was like, you know, but this is my project and you know, this is my work. And I said, no, it's not your work. Are you paying for the studio? No, you're being paid. Uh, uh, is this, are you, is this your product? No, you're just the lyric writer. So my advice is be humble. If it's your creative project and you're paying for the sound stage and you're paying for the studio and you're paying for music, have an opinion because it's your money. But if you've just a person for hire, a voice for hire, a singer for hire, just keep your mouth shut and do what the director says. That's it. Oh, I feel so good to get this off my chest. Ah. <sighs>